You're listening to Masala Chai. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Masala Chai with me. Guess what? This episode is the final episode of season one. So you would think it's a bit special? Unfortunately not. I don't know what it is, but uh, my friends and any other guests that can possibly come are always busy. This is something that I'm working on to prevent from happening again in season two, which trust me, it won't because um, the way I'm going to handle season two is going to be significantly different in terms of the systemic manner I'm going to be approaching it with. Uh, so realistically speaking for season two there's a lot more expectations and there should be a higher expectation as a matter of fact i can't i can't wait to show you guys what i have in store for season two but unfortunately we have to finish off season one i mean not unfortunately i mean this show has been pretty much my past i mean past three months this is what i've been doing and uh and it's actually quite quite interesting to think that I started this podcast three months ago and uh, it's been a bit of my uh, my daily life uh, I, I could never think of of my life being oh wait yeah I gotta come home I gotta do this gotta do that I gotta make a podcast episode called masala chai it's 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 definitely uh, I would say a life changer because I mean obviously it hasn't made my life any significant I guess I mean not significant I, I don't know what I'm saying but um it has changed my life, is what I'm saying. So, with that being said, I feel like we should go into what we're going to talk about today in this podcast episode. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might know this about me, you may not know this about me, but I am a cinephile. I love films, I love movies, uh, maybe too much, because uh, <laughs> my friends always blame me by saying, dude, you, you, there's not a single film that you don't like. It's, it's not because I, I don't like films because um, I'm just, you know, inclined to like them. I like them because I tend to see the films the way that the creative artists who were working in it would, would have seen it from. I mean, there's obviously a reason why a film would have been released. There, there would have been something in that film that was special to them um, that, you know, that really bonded that cast, that, that crew, um, the people working there. It, that love that they showed, that support between each other is what created that, that output, that film. So when I look at a film, I'm not only looking at the story, the screenplay, the, the cinematography, the music, the dialogue. I'm, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at the, the director's intentions, um, the way that they've subtly, I don't know, like, like, like breaking the fourth wall or, or the technique, the styles that they, they, they make the film in. I, I, I tend to appreciate the best things out of everything I can see. I, 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 I guess I'm a bit of an optimist, but when it comes to filmmaking, I really try to narrow things down and really find out what I like about things more than what I don't like about things. Because obviously, I mean, it's, any artist would know that there is no such thing as perfection. There isn't, especially in art, when you're making films, when you're making uh, scripts, screenplays, there is never a thing called perfection. You can tell, you can ask any artist, you can ask any director, any actor, when they go back and look at their past performances, their past work, if you ask them, were you satisfied with this? They will say no. Because after all that experience in their life, they will have gone past all of that and they would have been like, actually, I, I could have done better because I could have done this, I could have done that. Stuff that they would have only figured out eventually after, I don't know, how, how many years of experience or, or, uh, um, or whatever they've been through, the encounters they have gone through in their, in their career. They would have had a different sense of hindsight, which they wouldn't have had when they were their naive self. I mean, I wouldn't say naive because that's a bit, it's a bit threatening, really. It's, it's not a good word to use, especially when, when discussing or describing uh, work like this, like artistic work. It's not good to use the word naive, and I apologize for that. What I meant to say is that so for a person who, who was less experienced at a point and then going back looking at stuff, they'll be like, wait a minute, why did I do that? I could have done this. I could have made that better. I could have done this. And that's just a process of learning. Unfortunately, that is the truth. You will, you're never going to meet someone who's so perfect. There's never going to be a perfect film. There's always going to be errors. And that's kind of what makes it beautiful. 
Now, a lot of people actually agree with me on this. It's kind of a consensus online. A lot of cinephiles agree with this as well. Is that the most the, the most beauty in films comes with the errors that it it brings. It's the same thing as people, right? Uh, when when you're when you're getting someone in a relationship, uh, or you're you're kind of you know you're gonna go or how, how do I express? <laughs> I'm kind of lost for words now. Uh, when you are okay, when you meet someone and when they're in your life, okay, you accept them for who they are yeah you don't accept the good parts of them but you also accept the terrible parts of them and that that awfulness all that uh ir- irregularities all the uh you know all the discretion that comes with their character it's a part of the package and it's what makes them them right that's what i'm trying to say and that's exactly the same concept with filmmaking is exactly the same concept with with the way films are made the way they exist they have to be imperfect or else there is no beauty in in uh, idolizing or or adoring something that's perfect because it's perfect. There's nothing to look at it. If it's good, if it's perfect, then it's just, it's the ideal thing. Then there will be no beauty in anything that's not perfect. But if you, if you look at something that's not perfect, you can see, wait a minute, it's not, it's not great, but it's good. But at the same time, you can look at it and be like, ha, that's funny. This is something that you can go back. And it's always an interesting pr- perspective. It keeps going back to perspective. Towards the past eight episodes on, in this channel, not channel, in this podcast, you guys might have noticed that a lot of conversations link back to perspective because it is probably the most important key thing in human social interaction. Perspectives. You can't have a proper conversation with another human being without sharing a different perspective. I mean, you can also share the same perspectives, but if you both have the same perspective, there's no discussion to begin with, right? There's going to be no, uh, there's gonna, there will be no conversations that will ever occur if you share the same opinions, the same directives, the same character lifestyles. Uh, life will just become mundane, which is kind of why I believe everyone is different, and that's why everyone should be different, because if you're not different, then there's nothing special about you. And uh, it's kind of deep, but is the truth. And I feel like a lot of people need to learn this early on because it really will help them uh, at, at work, at school, uh, etc. So uh, with that being said, I love films. And my microphone just shook. I love films. Okay, I, I can't. I can't just. I can't say I don't love them because I love all types of genres: mystery, thriller, um, crime, which kind of goes for mystery and thriller, I guess. Comedy. Okay, nor if that's even considered. Uh, I mean, recently I've been watching a lot of uh, a Hollywood. Um, what do you call that? The the cowboy age. I don't know. I don't know what the genre is exactly. Uh, but I love indie films as well because the beauty of indie films is I can relate with them because uh, it's an independent production, right? It's 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 someone who is trying to um, start their their journey, their their career. And I can relate with that because I myself, I'm trying to find every possibility I can to start a p- potential career in, uh, in in filmmaking. While I do want to be a lawyer and all that, my passion lies in filmmaking. And I will do whatever it takes for me to abuse that ability to uh, to force content down people's throats. Because I have the brain for it. I think I have the brain for it. I have the, I have the creativity. And uh, I have a lot of good friends who are who are there to help me out to achieve that goal. But with that being said, I keep saying with that being said for some odd reason. But anyway, that's a great segue. Um, films in 2022. I can tell you the most recent film I watched in the theater was an Indian film. Uh, but before that, it was obviously Spider-Man No Way Home. I really want to discuss Spider-Man No Way Home. Actually, a friend of mine, Andrew Teddy, and I were going to do that. But unfortunately, he's busy until the end of the month. So I will not be able to record a podcast with him about that. But I have been planning this for more than two months. Me, uh, Andrew and I, you're probably listening to this anyway. You and I were going to discuss about this. I respect that decision. We will talk about it. I will not talk about Spider-Man. Trust me. I'm so tempted, but I won't. Instead, I'm going to be talking about two other films that I'm so super excited for. The first one being Uncharted. All right. Now, Uncharted is a game that I grew up with. If you guys don't know what Uncharted is, it's a game by Naughty Dog. 
back in 2009, is it? I don't even know when they came up with the game. The first game came out very, uh, pretty much it came out a long time ago. All right. I was still a kid. Um, my dad bought me the PlayStation 3 when I was, uh, when I was quite young, actually. After I recovered from pneumonia, he bought me the PlayStation 3. He bought me a Wii when I was, when I was uh, sick with pneumonia. That was a very, uh, I remember that time. It was, I, was, I was very young, but I remember that, that memory very vaguely. And uh, I used to play a lot of the games. But the point is, I used to play Uncharted. Uh, I, I never had money to buy the actual game, so I used to go to this place. Um, I think it's Best Denki or some shop where they had like a lot of electronic stuff, and there was a small mini corner in that shop where they would uh, like rent out games. So because back then it was like films, like Blockbuster. You know, Blockbuster is a very common American uh, movie renting place. Uh, this place they used to rent out games, PlayStation Three games, PlayStation Shoot to Shoot, PlayStation Two games, and a few other consoles. They used to rent those out, and I used to go there. And uh, I rented out Batman, first of all, not, not, Uncharted was afterwards. But the first game I rented out was this demo. Actually, when I had the PlayStation 3, the only thing I kept playing it again and again and again was the free demo of Batman Arkham Asylum because I had no games to play with because the games were very expensive. You bought the console and the game itself is, is like $60. So it's very expensive, right? No one in the right mind would go and buy it. Especially me then, we didn't have, I wasn't like... I wouldn't say monetarily f financially stable, but I would say I wasn't, my parents weren't willing to spend $60 on a game for me. So uh, then I used to go and rent out games and the games you would rent would be like only $10 for two weeks or three weeks or until you finish it. So I used to rent out Uncharted, this game I really, really wanted to play. Uncharted 2 just came out. I played Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, I played Uncharted 2. The lady there, I remember this so very well. The lady there was so nice that she just gave me the game. She legit just said, you know what? Keep the game. Just take it. I was very young. Uh, 2012, I was, I was 10 years old. She just gave it to me. And that game, oh my God, kids, kids, guys, that game was the best game of my life. It's so, so good. Uncharted It's something I grew up with. I played since I was 10 years old. Uncharted 3 came out uh, three, two, year, th two, three years after the, afterwards. And Uncharted 4 came out. When Uncharted 4 ended, I cried I cried. I legitimately cried because it was such an emotional journey. It's not like a journey that you just have. It's not a game you play like last year and then it's just one game. This was my childhood that I saw. And so, so to see that character, that family of, of Nathan Drake, uh, Sully, to see uh, Chloe, to see, I mean, all these characters that we grew up with just you know, finishing them off. It was, it was very, very personal to me. And uh, I took that very sadly. I really wanted an Uncharted movie. This was a rumor that came out a long, long time ago. The Uncharted movie was kind of similar to Deadpool with the way that they treated Deadpool. Um, they, they said they were going to make a movie, but uh, the project was dropped by this company, by that company. This production house dropped it. That production house dropped it. They kept, they kept changing directors, kept changing um scripts they kept changing screenplays this happened that happened finally ryan Reynolds somehow he managed to get it to work and we got the beauty of a, of a film deadpool uncharted was in the same uh same same scenario i guess um it was a project that was that was made or it was planned for a long long time but no one had the guts they always thought they wouldn't do it well they thought they wouldn't do it justice and one person that i had in mind who would be the perfect nathan drake the perfect he was born for this role just like tony stark robert downey jr just like uh hugh jackman as wolverine the perfect person for this role would have been nathan fillion i have no doubt in me saying this nathan fillion is and will forever be the perfect place perfect person to play nathan drake on the live screen now he is i wouldn't say he's old he's perfectly young because RDJ was roughly his age when he first started playing Iron Man. So he's, trust me, he's old enough to play the character. But I was kind of disappointed with the way that Uncharted was was going for a younger Nathan Drake, like his, his prime. Because in, in Uncharted 3, we first got to play with, um, we, we first got to play as young Nathan Drake. And I guess that's the kind of person, that's the character they're trying to get Tom Holland to do. Which I, but, but let's be honest, Tom Holland is, is someone that you just see as Spider-Man. I, I can't see him as, as Nathan Drake. Maybe it's a bit too early for me to decide. Maybe you have to watch the film. But for a person who is such a fanatic of the Uncharted series, and honestly, I love Spider-Man as well. I mean, Spider-Man is also our, our childhood series. Uh, but 
to see Spider-Man play Nathan Drake is is kind of a it's kind of a gray area for me. I, I don't know how I feel about it. And then they tell me Sully is being played by by freaking who who was the one playing? I forgot his name. Mark Wahlberg is playing Sully. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't get it. I didn't I don't see I don't see Mark Wahlberg as Sully at all. I feel like they're just putting A-list actors on there just to make them feel just make just make them just make the movie work, you know, get the get the money out of the box office, which obviously is going to get anyway because it's such a hyped up movie. It's, Sony's in it, PlayStation, which is obviously Sony. I mean, it's a huge high production film. So, I don't see how the movie's not going to do well, but to force Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland as as Nathan and Sully is is a bit worrying. But then I saw a leaked photo of Mark Wahlberg or I think he posted on his Instagram with his stash and I thought hold up maybe maybe I judged too quickly cuz that photo was was a really good photo it he really did look like he like he played the part he was really good for it um so with that being said I feel like Mark Wahlberg might be a good Sully but I'm still not convinced with Tom Holland we'll see the movie is coming out in a few weeks time obviously you know I'm going to be there to watch it so yeah that's that's what I'm pretty much going to do anyways uh I don't even know where I was but um yeah, so I'm actually really excited for Uncharted and uh I'm really waiting to see that film. I will see it as soon as it's out, uh, depending on when I'm home, of course. But um cannot wait for that film. Definitely going to be an amazing movie. Uh yeah. Um so the second film I'm waiting for, this one I'm probably more more excited for is The Batman. The Batman, ladies and gentlemen. When people said Robert Pattinson is going to be the Batman, I was also very skeptical, but I saw the first look and I was mesmerized. He is the perfect first year Batman. The suit is just wonderful. It it is it is beyond beyond expression. I I cannot express how beautiful the suit looks. Um and the director, Matt Reeves, he is such a well credible credited director and his his visions for the for the year one batman is is incredible i'm loving the way that the movie is being directed with a dark you know really grotesque really moody like a, a really ego like not ego sorry a really yeah what is the word for it you know those really gothic batman like this is when this is like after he's finished his training uh, and he's and he's back in gotham and he sees how much the city has changed and he's looking at all like he's analyzing things not as Bruce Wayne because listen Bruce Wayne is not who Batman is Batman is his true identity Bruce Wayne is just a facade that he puts on it's not a mask now Batman is not the, is not the fake persona here Batman is who he is um so that's something people don't actually know but you can just tell by the way he's portrayed by the trailer that amounts of trailers that they've been the Bat and the Cat the first uh, official trailer that they released back in 2020 uh DC Fandom I went crazy. I went mad. I could not begin. I cannot contain my excitement. I really cannot wait for this. March 3rd is really releasing in Singapore. I'm counting my days to watch that film. On IMAX, I will be purchasing the seats immediately. There is no description for how excited I am to watch Batman. Legitimately none. I have nothing to say about Batman because I'm going to make another separate podcast episode just for me to describe Batman and to talk about how awesome this movie is cuz I know for a fact it's going to be a masterpiece. It's going to be a masterpiece. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard from me first. You heard from me first. All right? With that being said, that is the end of movie discussions with your boy Andrew. Now, let me tell you something. This is the final episode of this season, but it is not the end of Masala Chai at all. Obviously, Masala Chai is getting renewed for season two. And I say renewed like I'm some kind of big production house. It's just me who pressed another button which said upload. <laughs> but let's be honest. Masala Chai is, is kind of awesome, all right? And season two is going to be bigger, better, more fantastic. We're going to have guests almost every single episode. Now, I said this last time, but I'm working on a new system. So keep updated. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on, uh, yeah, so Instagram. 
I'm going to have uh, a separate YouTube channel, probably. I haven't decided on that yet for Masala Chai. I'm going to have a separate Instagram account for Masala Chai where I'll be posting out snippets to promote my podcast so people can actually see whether they like it or not. The most interesting parts of the podcast are going to be on there. And um, just know that from now on, it's not going to be just me. We're going to have guests all over, all over Masala Chai. And we're going to have a club of Masala Chai with them. All right? Because we are. I'm telling you this. We're doing it. We're doing it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going... We're going big, all right? We're going big or we're going home. And I'm already home, so let's just go big, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for today's episode, the grand finale of Masala Chai with your boy. Now, again, like I said one last time, stay tuned on Instagram, stay tuned on YouTube, okay? Subscribe to me, follow me on Instagram. I cannot begin, just follow me on Instagram, okay? Follow me, just follow me and you'll be posted, sorry, you will be notified, I can't even speak, I'm so excited, you'll be notified of any new advances, advancements of Masala Chai, so just make sure to follow me, and that will be the end of today's episode, thank you so much for listening, and stay safe, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like it, comment, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification icon, and if you're listening to this on Spotify, follow the playlist, follow the podcast playlist, so you'll know when the next episode is out, shook my camera there for no reason but anyway peace out ladies and gentlemen have an amazing day and uh ta-ta